I'd like to begin this morning and introduce Douglas Bishop, a poet who lives in Lowell, Massachusetts, grew up in New England, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Vermont as a child, especially enjoyed the art of drawing, cartoons, superheroes, football players, and he was not interested in writing poetry so much as a child. It came later to him in his 20s when he was out hitchhiking on the road in those days. And um, Douglas uh, noted that one time when hitchhiking, a poem came into his head. And, and then he began to uh, compose, come up with them, and recite them to the cars that were passing by. And mm -hmm. it was a bit of an epiphany experience then. And, and that is how poetry entered. And in the 1970s, when uh, sharing his poetry out then in the Northampton area, uh, met and started collaborating with a group of jazz musicians who weren't so happy with the jazz music scene in bars out there and wanted uh, to find different venues and different places to perform and met up with Douglas who felt likewise about poetry, that there weren't a lot of places uh, to combine music and poetry. Douglas credits the open mic community for fueling his writing and performing, especially the Cambridge scene of Cantab and Lizard Lounge. And he has hosted his own venue at Walden Pond, and he said he's now at a reading series in Lowell called Brood Awakening. And uh, Douglas says he sincerely values the community of writers and performers that come to the venues and how welcoming and supportive they have been of him. And. Uh, and then in, for asking for one memory of a time sharing a poem, uh, Douglas spoke of being on the Salmon River in Idaho on a rafting trip and at, in the evening at, around a campfire and people were talking and uh, he shared a poem that, and these are people not familiar with poetry who find it typically, uh, never thought of poetry as anything but esoteric, impossible to understand pursuit. But they gave it a chance, and they listened to Douglas, and they were quickly hooked and asked him to share a poem every night at the campfire from then on. And when asked why share poetry with others, Douglas said, there is a fierce particular magic in the interaction of word, performer, and audience that can't be duplicated between the page and reader. And he is here to share his poetry with some of his instruments of music with us this morning. And they are all set to go right over here. So I'd like to invite you to give a big, warm, welcoming hand to Douglas Bishop. Getting where to go, I always end up singing. The word flows on and on, as it has from the beginning. Let it shine and let it flow, and let it sound aloud. Let it fly and let it roll, sounding round about. Forgetting where to go, forgetting where to go. Forgetting, 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 forgetting. The word is sacred for itself, arriving here from nowhere, connected to no other word. Sacred merely as the word. Everything has beauty simply by being. String a pearl a thousand ways, it still remains a pearl. I say, let it shine and let it flow and let it sound aloud. Let it fly and let it roll, sounding round about. Forgetting where to go, forgetting where to go. Forgetting, 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 huh? I improvise my life. I don't know where I'm going. The beguilement of the moment is all that guides me. Movement flows out of movement as one note proceeds from the other. The word drools out of my mouth like the unconscious babble of babies. So I suck on my toe and I wonder who created the word. Forgetting where to go, forgetting where to go. Forgetting, 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 forgetting. Following a train of thought behind an engine of babel. Instigation, implication, conflagration, bloom. Forgetting, 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 forgetting. 
Let it shine and let it flow and let it sound aloud. Let it fly and let it roll, sounding round about. Forgetting where to go, forgetting where to go, forgetting. I am looking for that space of eternal spontaneity, of holistic a creativity where I, forgetting all in wild gaiety, following the heart's proclivity, end up at the start, forgetting where to go, forgetting. Shine on, shine on, shine on, shine on, shine on, shine on, shine on. Shine on, 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 shine on. Let it be forgotten. Sweet pleasure melteth Like two bubbles when rain pelteth Let the winged fancy wander Though the thought still spread beyond her Open wide the mind's cage door She'll dart forth and cloudward soar Oh sweet fancy let her loose Summer's joys are spoilt by use and the enjoying of the spring fades as does its blossoming. Autumn's red lipped a fruitage too, blushing through the mist and dew. Cloys with tasting break the mesh of the fancy silken leash. Sit thee there and send abroad with a mind self overawed. Fancy high commissioned center, she has vassals to attend her. She will bring, in spite of frost, beauties that the earth hath lost. She will bring thee all together, all delights of summer weather, all oh, the buds and bells of May. From dewy sward or thorny spray, all the heaped autumn's wealth With a still mysterious stealth She will mix these pleasures up Like three fit wines in a cup And thou, thou shalt quaff it Break, break the mesh of the fancy silken leash. Oh, sweet fancy, let her loose. Everything is spoilt by use. Where's the cheek that doth not fade? Too much gaze that wears the maid whose lip mature is ever new. Where's the eye, however blue? Doth not weary, where's the face one would meet in every place? Where's the voice, however soft, one would hear so very oft? At a touch, sweet pleasure melteth like two bubbles when rain pelteth. Let the winged fancy find. The a mistress to thy mind Quickly break her prison string And such joys as these she'll bring Ever let the fancy roam Pleasure never is at home Ever let the fancy roam Pleasure never is at home
Thank you. Um, that first piece, Forgetting, I wrote, I don't know, when I was in college, maybe 30 years ago. I was in a writing program, but um, my teacher thought I thought that performance poetry was a joke, kind of, so I wrote that in response to him. It's, it's, it's evolved over the years. The other one, I don't know if you noticed, but you know, it had some kind of archaic language in it. That was a, a poem by John Keats, uh, slightly edited, uh, Fancy, which was written about 200 years ago. Here's a poem I'm, I'm still writing. <laughs> we'll see. If, if, I, if I like it, if, if, if you respond well to it, maybe I'll write it down. <laughs> I am invisible here. The person you are looking at is not me. I may speak with his voice, but don't, don't assume he is talking about himself. If only his mouth were bigger, then he could be the conduit for a flood of voices, emptying out an ocean of words, speaking with a thousand tongues and a thousand dead languages at once, insinuating my way into your genetic memory. There are so many poets here. If you were really able to listen to them all, then you might hear me. Then you might see how the wind breezes through this body, how chlorophyll greens inside this head, how secrets of sunlight creep out of the pores of these fingers. Silence is my native land, and song my second language. The prison of promises painted over lies is mine too. I'm an architect of impossibility, constructing category, constructing scaffolding to, to bridge the gap between you and what you call reality. There's no need for my name. Everyone speaks to me. They all say, me, me. I am the one who said that, the one who dreamed this dream that no one else can dream. But they are no more than just the first fat flakes of fall coming down heavy on brightly colored leaves. No one has ever been sustained by such improbable beauty. There's no end to the possibilities that you might not experience if you can't get past the pretense that this is just one man speaking. There are so many, so many explanations that might try to convince you that I do not exist, but, but believe me, I am more important to opening your home than that key jangling around in your pocket. My love does not come from this foolish old man standing before you, aching with sound, full of wishes. Even the aspirations of vegetables echo in my voice. Do you think I'm joking? Only those who, who, real, those who really know, know how to laugh. Branches bend at crazy angles. Grasses push their seeds to the sky. And purple crocuses emerge from the snow so that you might duly praise them. Faced with the oxymoron of identity, the only appropriate response is devotion. So I will keep whispering in your ear. I will keep, I want you to, to, to see the, the veins of particular leaves and have them etch into your consciousness. I want you to feel the, the energy building up in the mitochondria of your cells. I wish you could, could use a knife-like image to cut through whatever joy or sorrow, confusion or understanding you have. I'm invisible here because what you need to create is the message, not the messenger, the poem, not the poet. There is no other that does not dream. I'm the only blade of grass in the field, the only clear water nestled in the valley, the only sunflower bending its heavy, wet head, the only white birch cracking rose quartz. All this is contained in a tiny blue pearl that pulsates and waits. But it is not different from these lungs that heave from my lips that gently kiss your feet. 
There is no other that does not dream. I am the only leaf left drifting on the rippled surface of the lake, the only seed lifting light into the breeze, the only pebble shining silver and golden, wet in the rain, the only the only footprint left in the mud. All this is contained in the ineffable blue light of this jewel that waits, pulsating. But it is not different from these eyes that weep from my forehead, press quiet to your feet. There is no other that does not dream. No one to observe the thinly gathering mist. No one to dangle fingers in the bubbling current. No one to assume understanding of the dew left hanging in the morning on the thin strand of a broken web. No one else to be the reason for my sacrifice. All this is only, only what it is, perfect and corrupted both, but not different from these hands that offer themselves up to duty, spreading their knowledge like scented oil on your feet. I am I. I am I. Presence, creation, indeed living, in wing disappearing. All right, I, I want to bring up uh, Mark Hyman has, has very graciously, because he's never done this before, agreed to uh, become my percussionist for this next piece. And he's got a rain stick there. And, and he's, he's going to, it'll be his, his inaugural time playing it, right? Um, so. I'm ready to go when you All want. right, thank you. So this poem is called Rain. And it starts with the rain stick. Your words, like the rain, fall from heaven, gently indiscriminate upon the place beneath, fall like the words of women passing on a busy morning, like one clear name echoing across a lake at twilight, like the continuous calling of children on the first warm day of spring. Fall without thought or choice, echoing the same phrases, the same syllables, multitudinous and commonplace. Fall touching like a lover's sensitive fingers the ears of those who hear. Like the sigh of a mother to her child as it stirs beside her in the night. Like the shouts of men at play. Fall, effluent like little drops of mist, only half remembered, only partially expressed, only rarely saying what you meant. Yet your words still come whether or not they will be forgotten. Despite their random worthlessness, certainly not because of their magic possibilities, still come unbidden, still come without stricture, still come like the gentle rain that falls, twice blessed, as if each word had a meaning beyond itself. Truth, like the rain, is usually unwelcome. Either shattering out after being bottled in, leaving shards of old complacencies under the skin, or else seeping slowly as if through the leaky roof of an empty house where you come in time to realize that your imagination is far more foolish than you had ever dreamed. And in the quiet of this very personal humiliation, there's nothing left to do 
but step out into the rain and let the falling fingers of mercy wash your face. If you can accept so much forgiveness, you might just, out of the silence, hear a voice that offers that salvation none should see if mercy did not stand above the truth. You will find this voice that knows the musical oblivion of the babbling day, but also knows the words that ears can hear, that is not afraid to speak the truth, but also knows the words that heal and wake, that knows that mercy is not always kind, but also welcomes the names and voices of the children like drops of rain on a dry tongue. This voice, this voice will start to sound soon like your own when you find that quality of mercy that knows how to, how to speak like the rain. Good job, Mark. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's that's my set. All I want for Christmas is for each of us at war to end all of our fighting for just one moment more for if just one moment more keeps adding to one moment more one moment at a time we'll find there's no more time for war Peace begins at home, I'm told, deep within one soul. When we make our peace within, it's then we can live whole. But I've been living half of who I could be for this life. Inside me there dwells judgment, envy, arrogance and strife. Now I do try my hardest to drive my demons out. Left to my own devices, all hope turns into doubt. For I've been shown time after time, it's love that heals what ails. No matter what I do, it's only love that can prevail. All I want for Christmas is for each of us at war to end all of our fighting for just one moment more. For if just one moment more keeps adding to one moment more, one moment at a time we'll find there's no more time for war. Thank you. The palm at the end of the mind Beyond the last thought Rises in the bronze to cool Oh, gold-feathered bird sings in the palm Without human meaning, without human feeling A fool song you know then that it is not the reason that 
that makes us happy or unhappy. The bird sings its feathers shine. The palm stands at the edge of space. The wind moves slow. Love Story, 1914. Once Hazel set her cap for Jack and loosed her braid crimped hair, the poor besotted bachelor did not have a prayer. Lavender, jasmine, rosemary